The long-awaited Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom has finally graced our screens. Resuming the narrative where it concluded, we find David Kane, also known as Black Manta, still harboring a deep-seated desire for revenge against Aquaman due to the loss of his father. Meanwhile, Arthur has successfully claimed the throne from his brother, assuming the role of the King of Atlantis. True to the spirit of the initial installment, the sequel presents a blend of thrilling action sequences and heartfelt moments. However, what sets it apart is its intriguing conclusion, which doesn't overtly hint at the possibility of a third movie. Before we explore the potential directions the storyline might take, fair warning, spoilers lie ahead. In the conclusion of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, there's no post credit scene to await, but rather a mid credit scene that might not captivate those averse to insects, particularly cockroaches. Yet, let's focus on the significant developments. As the credits loom, Aquaman makes a pivotal decision. It's time to unveil the existence of the Kingdom of Atlantis to the surface world. This decision follows his triumph over Black Manta and the destruction of the ancient cursed Kingdom of Necrus. In a spectacle witnessed by millions, an Atlantean ship emerges from the waters within the United States. News anchors globally announce the King of Atlantis's intention to address the United Nations about the global calamity caused by Black Manta. While the exact cause of the escalating natural disasters remains unspecified, Arthur commits Atlantis to provide technological assistance to humanity for remedying the planet's affliction. The broadcast extends to Atlantis, where the High Council expresses visible concern, having opposed this revelation from the start. Following this impactful speech, the film concludes with Arthur listing his titles. A father, a brother, the King of Atlantis, and finally, Aquaman. The absence of a dramatic cliffhanger doesn't diminish the significance of a recurring phrase in the movie, a true king builds bridges. We speculate that this phrase might hint at the potential plotline for a third Aquaman movie, should it come to fruition. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing our channel. Moving on to theories and predictions. Considering how events unfolded, the forthcoming installment seems poised to delve into the conflict between surface dwellers and the denizens of the underwater kingdom with a spotlight on Atlantis's High Council. Their mistrust towards the human world, which has historically polluted the oceans and harmed marine life, suggests a substantial role for them in the unfolding narrative. On the human side, Arthur, acting as the crucial link between both realms, faces the daunting task of convincing surface dwellers to place their trust in beings that have remained hidden underwater for centuries. How will he leverage his authority as king and his half-human status to foster harmony between the two worlds? Another intriguing question arises. Will a new supervillain emerge, prompting both surface and sea dwellers to unite against a common threat? Alternatively, could the conflict escalate into a civil war between humans and Atlanteans? While the latter plot might appear straightforward, it could still offer a compelling storyline, revolving around Aquaman's quest to bring peace to both worlds. It's worth noting the uncertainty surrounding Jason Momoa's future as the iconic superhero, as the fate of future Aquaman movies remains uncertain in the current DCEU slate. This uncertainty adds an extra layer of intrigue to the potential conclusion of Momoa's portrayal of Aquaman.